So thanks for coming um, back with us, Bob. If you could give us just a brief summary of synopsis of what the Tucson Cares program is and introduce yourself and how you um, came to be a part of the program and what all you've been up to for the last year. Yeah, thanks so much for having us, Nadia. Um, Tucson Cares uh, primarily uh, centers on interdisciplinary teams of student workers, um, faculty, staff, and um, public health workers with our partners, um, University of Arizona Department of Family and Community Medicine. We operate an embedded drop-in space at the Tucson House, which is Tucson's largest public housing community, right. um, where we interact directly with residents every week, trying to overcome obstacles to health and wellness they might be facing, and connecting them to existing services in the community to help um, them just maximize their um, their mental, financial, and physical health. So uh, we're just wrapping up our first year of a two-year uh, pilot program. And uh, you know, we had a lot of success, uh, learned a lot, and uh, really excited about where we're heading in year two. That's exciting. So um, the Tucson House, a lot of people never know, right? It's that, this huge, tall building, and there's not a lot of those here in Tucson. It's all the rainbow colors, and we, I remember driving by for years and always yeah wondering what it was and being told it was a million different things. But yes, the largest public housing unit, 20% in all the city. And I think um, until right, at least I started working in this community-based social work world and really dove into like understanding what that meant, that's a pretty significant chunk of the population um, of folks in Tucson. So, you know, again, as I mentioned before, you know, a big part of what we do is just really on a person-to-person -person level, individual stuff. Um, but what's so great, again, about being in a building that um, represents such a large you know, um, swath of people involved in public housing in Tucson is it's really a high impact um, you know, area when you wanna reach a lot of people at once. Yes. And so now that things have become slightly safer you know, with the COVID situation, we've been um, focusing on having some more community events um, to connect people. Um, you know, really efficiently with these kind of one-day resource-focused things. So um, up until now, those have focused more on needs-based things like right. food, warm clothing, um, things of that nature. But we really wanted to do something fun because, you know, as you mm -hmm. know, with the COVID thing, um, for all of us, it affected socialization, but especially in that in that um, community where everyone's, you know, in a kind of high-risk area mm -hmm. being in that building. Um, there, that was a big thing, you know, a lot of people have come to us and let us know that, you know, you know, we really miss these communal events and that's been missing from the building. So we wanted to do something that really was celebrating the joy and talent and um, just the amazing community that are the residents of Tucson House. So yeah, we just recently um, had the the first annual um, resident art show and talent show uh, that we called uh, Tucson House Has Talent. Yeah. Don't, don't alert any lawyers at the TV <laughs> networks. But, uh, uh, and so, yeah, we, we uh, along with some of our um, community partners, um, led a week of arts and crafts activities with residents where they would come down. We'd make something different every day. Um, I know you were there volunteering, helping yeah. out when we uh, made some beautiful paper flowers with residents. We had a really good turnout on that day. And then uh, it all culminated in a big uh, resident art show on Friday where we had about 25 to 30 residents um, showing art had another probably 10 to 15 that read poetry, oh, sang cool. songs, and then also invited in um, about a dozen community partners to share info on um, low cost uh, arts and crafts activities around town, um, to talk about other uh, community events coming up near Tucson House. So again, uh, Tucson House is just a great opportunity for other organizations to come in, you know, share the services that they offer um, to a a community that is in need of a lot of those services so yeah yeah any other highlights before we wrap up for the last year so you said it's a two-year program finishing up year one yeah folks know pilot programs are all about they might or might not know trying things out adapting so absolutely what have you all done and what is ahead for the next year sure well we've learned a lot um, this year and of course you know dealt with some of the bumps of you know the kind of mid-year COVID resurgence that everybody encountered um, so feeling really good going into year two, kind of all systems go. Yes, um, nice. And so that's really exciting. Um, you know, some of the kind of like highlights of year one, we uh, had, you know, a warm clothing and blanket drive where we partnered with about a dozen um, local businesses and um, YMCA of Southern Arizona was a tremendous community partner in that effort and collected over 1500 um, articles of warm clothing that we awesome. distributed to residents, 250 blankets. Um, 
So that was great. And again, um, you know, these events really come out of that one-on-one -on -one interaction where residents um, can let us know directly some of the obstacles to health and wellness that they're facing. And it really makes us, um, you know, an efficient partner to residents and, and saying, okay, we hear you, let's solve this together, let's work on this together. Um, and I find that their residents are just always so willing to, to jump in and support us and support their neighbors. Uh, so that's been a beautiful experience. Um, as far as the, the kind of core, uh, you know, of the program, the, uh, the needs assessment and uh, the joint work that we do with U of A's um, Department of Family and Community Medicine, mm -hmm. um, we've engaged uh, about 110 residents who come and visit us regularly to address the obstacles they're facing. Um, we've had over uh, over 200 resident, um, residents engage with us at some point throughout the year and um, have just have given you know hundreds of referrals to existing services out there which we also work um, you know kind of hand in hand with residents to to follow through not just giving them a slip of paper saying yes. call this number but saying let's call this number together let's yes. get you scheduled what obstacles do you face to to take advantage of this let's let's figure out how to get you connected so this has been really empowering and seeing um, how much you can get done by just you know lending an ear, a hand, get that yes. laptop out, yeah. get on Google. Let's do I this together, it. people. Um, yeah. And so that's been tremendous. Um, and yeah, we're just really looking forward to uh, year two, you know, kind of our next big community event's gonna be a health, a health focused um, resource fair with our partners from U of A, um, where we're hoping to connect residents to um, COVID boosters, nice. um, some other on-site medical services that they might struggle to get to um, due to some obstacles like transportation and mobility right. and then just uh, bringing in other community partners to share info um, to again help improve resident health and wellness. Thanks Bob. Is there anything else you want to add before we take off? Any other details? Any other fun things to highlight? Well sure you know I mean I just I'd love to give a, a shout out to one of our Tucson Care staffers Mary Salt Peralta yes. um, who just uh, who just uh, had a very successful effort um, in the last couple of weeks connecting the young residents of Tucson House, um, which a lot of people don't think about who, no. even who are engaged in the building, you know, yeah. I wasn't aware of how many um, young people were there. And so, um, you know, Marisol really took it upon herself as we head into this next school year to make sure that every young person at Tucson House went into the year uh, with the school supplies that they needed and just prepared to succeed. So, um, on you know, on her own uh, and in her time in between helping the residents that we see at the drop-in, she worked really hard to source donations from uh, community partners and local businesses. And uh, as of this week, we connected every every uh, school age um, child in the building with backpacks, school supplies, um, a couple laptops sourced by another that's staffer, Zoe so Somerville. Cool. Um, and so, yeah, that's just something I want to highlight. And yeah, again, uh, shout out. That's awesome. just we're we're so grateful for all the help we get from our community partners and uh, and also I just love our team and the work that they do over this. I want to yeah. make sure and highlight that. That's so cool. I love that too. I love um, that initiative and figuring it out and then finding the needs and meeting them. I love it. Um, well, thank you again and thank you for joining us today with all the hard work. Thank yeah, you. absolutely. Thank you guys. It's been a pleasure being on.